Hi folks, so um, basically the module I'm going to be talking about is this uh, RDGY30330. So rather than reading the whole lot, it's essentially uh, a radiography focused healthcare IT module. And uh, I'm going to use the terms RIS and PACS throughout the talk. So RIS is radiology information system. So that's the one that does all the bookings, the scheduling, the managing of the reports. And then PACS is the picture archiving and communication system. And that manages all the images. So basically in the new digital hospital, we've got rid of x-ray film and we're trying to get rid of as much paper as possible. So where we were in terms of delivery, this very much fit, fit with the, the traditional model that Jonathan mentioned earlier, where we had the uh, midterm assessment and we had the exam at the end. So it was a, a largely inherited module and very, very traditional in format. The feedback coming from the students then, what we had was, because it's the left field subjects, it's, it's IT, so it's not directly related to clinical practice, so to speak. And the students found that it was very time consuming in terms of revision and also they found the exams particularly stressful for this module. However, I have to say that in performance terms the students did deliver so the results did actually tend to be above average for the semester. Interestingly, the in-course assessment, so the, the task they had to do in the middle, which was an IT related task, was the most valued thing in the feedback. And also, uh, we did have above average attendance in this module, but again, I think this may have been due to the left field nature of it, and the students were afraid to miss any lectures because it would be harder to revise. The one thing that we did actually find very, very much from both um, talking to students uh, in the feedback sessions and also talking to graduates was there was very, very little appreciation of the value or the context or the relevance of the material within the module in terms of it, it's how it related to the profession. And in fact, the postgraduates said it was only like two or three or four years later when they were in practice that they actually appreciated what was delivered and, and established the relevance then. So this is sort of where I felt we were. <laughs> um, I have to say I did manage to achieve the top two pictures occasionally. Uh, I never managed to put the whole class to sleep. Um, the other thing we felt it was was the students were treating it as a learn and forget exercise because if they didn't see the relevance, they were literally just uh, adapting to the task of passing the exam quite effectively with strategic learning and then possibly throwing the, the knowledge away. So basically what I did was I actually uh, work a lot with uh, audit and, and workflow re-engineering in my own uh, disciplines and expert areas. So I decided to apply those principles to the modification of the, 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 the module itself. So basically, um, defining the, the, the teaching components that had to be delivered, setting the learning goals, which, we, which is the standard by which we, we measure things in an audit cycle. So this then was to, uh, used to deliver the teaching material, uh, define the assessment. And then the most important thing in this was we wanted to make it adaptive and dynamic. So even within a semester, we wanted to have the ability to change things based on student feedback. So my opening gambit is basically an offer of a learning contract in the first session with the students. And basically the, the good is uh, no exam. The students are absolutely delighted when they hear that. There's no final exam. Uh, the bad is there's going to be weekly assessment. There's weekly workload I expect you to do, and there'll be a weekly assessment. And there's actually quite good acceptance because of the fact that there's no exam at the end. And the ugly then is um, basically I will give them the lecture notes in advance as part of the prescribed reading, if the attendance stays above 75%. This is a trick I actually used with the old module, and it was very effective. Uh, so basically, it's down to the cohort to manage themselves. It's much, much easier for them to police themselves than for me to police them, because you always end up preaching to the people that are in the room, when in fact you need to be speaking to the people that aren't. So uh, this is very, very effective. So the first component then of the new module was basically this prescribed study in advance of the lecture. So what I wanted them to do was to read something or look at something on, on the internet or whatever. Um, this was already valued in the feedback that they had before because again, there's no real good textbook for this. So when we gave them prescribed reading that included journal primers on the subject and, and uh, localized papers, some of them they actually found quite useful. So we were able to use this to demonstrate the relevance and put in context the lecture and the, the task that was going to follow in the same week. The next, that's basically what, so for, what was that, week 10? So that's basically what week 10 would have looked like to the students before the, uh, the quiz and, and the, the lab-based task. So this is the preparation they have to do on a weekly basis in order to be able to do the task. 
So the lecture, we still needed the lecture. It's healthcare IT is not an easy subject, and I need that engagement with the students. But at the same time, there was too much of it in the old ones, so what we did was we reduced it to one lecture a week. So basically, I had to build, compartmentalise and build the, the learning objectives into weekly delivery packages. So in, in that case, we, we brought down the, the volume, which was an issue for the students. And also, it made me focus more on establishing the relevance and putting in context the learning that I was trying to uh, deliver each week. So basically, Friday, we would release the, uh, the prescribed study. Uh, the lectures, so long as the attendance was maintained as per the learning contract, the lectures would go up at the same time. Tuesday, then, they would have an in-context lecture. And then Wednesday, they, or Thursday, depending on the lab groups, because we had to split them due to the, the size of the cohort, um, they would actually come in and do a quiz first off. And the quiz then would, if they passed the quiz, they would gain access to the lab. So in other words, if they were prepared effectively to do the practical task, they would get access to it. If they failed the quiz, they were deemed ill-prepared for the task, and then they would have to remediate. I'll talk about remediation later on. So the quiz then was actually really, really useful because this gave us the capability then to, to manage the workload and drive the students to manage the workload. So you see the, some of the shots of the quiz running in the top right there. So this was built using a um, um, storyline. And this was built as a SCORM package that integrated directly into Blackboard. So we were able to manage it through that. We were able to monitor continuously, week by week, the performance of the students, deal with remediation. And the students themselves then could see what their weekly targets were. And the feedback was automated so that they would not only see their scores, but also see the, the mean and the median, uh, the mean and yeah, mean and median for the, the, the cohort. So they could actually grade their own performance versus the rest of the class as well. And they actually identified this as really, really good. The other thing it does for us from the point of view of um, any accreditation is it verifies ECTR, ECTS errors compliance because they will not pass the quiz if they haven't done the reading and haven't reviewed the lecture material. So the quiz is a lot more than a carrot and a stick and you'll see that as, as, as we go through. So. so Basically, if they passed the quiz, then what they actually got was a, a practical task that they had to accomplish. So we had some opportunities, thankfully, because there's a national rollout of risk packs, and UCD has invested a quarter of a million and installed a clone of it in diagnostic imaging. So we're not connected to the national database, so there's no patient confidentiality issues, but it has the exact same look and feel as the national system. The students cannot get access to the national system because until you qualify, they won't create an account for you on the system. So it means that they're working in a clinical environment with limited access. So basically, if the practice tutor lets them onto the system with their login, fine. But some practice tutors are nervous about that because it's their name that's against them. So we were able to give them real, real practical engagement with a real system. So they essentially got the clinical experience in here that they, they couldn't actually get on, on site. So the lab task, we actually use adaptive release within Blackboard for. So again, because of the size of the classes and, and historically knowing from the labs, students are notorious for chopping and changing or maybe not showing up for lab. And so I didn't want to have to do any of that timekeeping. So basically, I split them into groups. And basically, they were time coded within the lab groups. So when they sat down, if they were in the right group, they're at the right time, and they passed the quiz, then the system would allow them access to the lab. So again, there was no need for me to police it. The st students themselves learned, failed the quiz, you may as well just either use the time on the, the PC to study what you didn't study in preparation for the class and join the remediation session the following week, or else they would actually uh, themselves get up and leave. So there was no debating, there was no policing or management. It was actually quite effective. So, um, sorry, adaptive release. A lab lab task example then. So basically got, they got these workbooks to work through and they would be focused on what the reading had been about that week and what the, the lecture had been about that week and then they would have to accomplicate qu quite sophisticated tasks in some cases. So these are some of the advanced images that the students actually produced during the image processing uh, week. And uh, for undergraduate students, stage three students to be producing images like this is probably unique in the world at this stage in any academic program. Um, not only are they actually doing the work, but they're also having to make comments, and the comments would largely be driven from the prescribed reading. So they would have to critically evaluate the work that they were doing in context of the reading that they had done. The nice thing then was all of this was feeding continuously into Braid Center within Blackboard. So I actually have a week by week um, um, performance graph or, or, or 
indicator for every single student. And it's very, very interesting to see at the early days the ones that did drop into remediation, then their grades would actually hike up and for the most part stay up there. We had a couple maybe that started to dip back down. But again, every single week they're getting feedback. So when I actually grade the lab books within Grade Centre, I'm actually writing the commentary. So they have individual tailorised feedback happening the same week that they do the labs. So they would do the labs on the Wednesday and the Thursday. Friday, I would actually grade all the labs. They would get the feedback. And I heard somebody uh, last week tell me, our oh, students never look at the feedback. I was getting queries back within 20 to 25 minutes of, of actually doing that feedback. Okay? So that, that's an absolute myth. I can tell you that all the students have the uh, tool on their smartphones now. They're monitoring the grades. They're monitoring the feedback. And I was getting prompts straight back through the same system. Um, and the really, really fantastic part of this is the students ended up striving for excellence, not striving to pass the module. And I had the evidence of this is quite simply, I would give a 95% mark and give some feedback, and I would be challenged on the 5%, and students actually debating. So they're not aiming for the traditional, let's get a name, let's get 70%, and just think about GPA. They're actually striving for excellence, which I think was a, a, a real achievement. So basically, yeah, they, they log into my grades either in Blackboard or they use the tool and they can actually see where they're getting on. So that's the summary of the weekly learning package and it was built in 12 weeks, segmented learning. And what we wanted to do was to make sure that the students actually developed. So that's a complicated diagram. But basically, everything on this side, radiographers don't do. They depend on. Uh, sometimes they do that piece there and they don't do that piece there. So, there's an awful lot of people involved in the typical workflow. So what I did was, again, we wouldn't be able to do this in a real system. I was able to make them the requesting GP, the ordering physician, the vetting radiologist or clinical specialist radiologists do that as well. The scheduler, the receptionist, the radiographer. So now not only do they know how to use the system, but they also understand their, their role as part of the complete global chain of healthcare delivery. And they understand what happens when there's failures beforehand, how that impacts what they do, and they understand if there's failures and what they do, how that's going to impact the people that come afterwards. And this was clearly identified in the last session because we did a troubleshooting session and they were the ones that told me what the problems were, how we avoid them, and how we fix them. So really all learning outcomes are being very, very solidly achieved. So remediation discussion. So basically, if, if they miss in a week, they would have to come in at 8 o'clock the following Tuesday. So 8 to 9 would be a remediation lab, and they would come in and do it. And the unsocial error, coupled with the fact that they had to do an extra error, meant that uh, the, the failures tended to die off very, very quickly. Staff workload discussion. So nearly come to the end now. So um, I have to say there was a significant amount of development time involved in this because there was no template to work from. Uh, there's still going to be some development time to come for the next adaption because this was the first cycle and lessons learned. We're going to make sure we do that adaption and optimise it. Uh, no reduction in weekly contact time because, unfortunately, I'm the risk pack specialist in the department, so I have to be there for all the labs in case there are any issues. Uh, weekly adaptive releases, a slight uh, little bit of work that has to be done there because it has to be tailored, and then you need to set up a remediation lab the following week to re-release the material. Definitely an increased grading workload, so as my Friday mornings was basically spent from 9 to 12 uh, doing all the lab reports and getting the feedback out there. So and the, the increase probably was not just as much about grading, but also in feedback, because every single student did actually get active feedback. And the great thing about the feedback is it's put in context as a clinical setting. And sometimes there are things that they had to fix because all of this was building block materials. So something that they did in week two or week three, they would be reusing in week six and week seven. So when they got the feedback, they actually had to go back in and fix it within the system. Is it worth the effort? Um, I have students smiling and laughing in class. Okay? That, that, for the healthcare IT subject, that's a novelty. All right? uh, regular and multiple thank you, John, at the end of a lab. So I have students furiously typing for an hour, completely active, working very, very well, having done the preparation work in advance and the evidence is there for it. And yet I'm getting a thank you, John, at the end of it. So that was good. Very much increased engagement with the lectures. So they were interacting in the lecture classes, whereas before I was delivering and I was trying to draw blood from the stone. Uh, Blood from a stone to get a comment from them. So uh, greater than 90% attendance at all lectures, and I have to say I had 100% attendance at more than 50% of the lectures. That's pretty good for stage three. So students chasing excellence, as I said, so they weren't aiming for 70%, they weren't aiming for the A target, they were aiming to get 
it done right, done properly. So I thought that was fantastic. We do a poll every year, so greater than 75% of them were uncomfortable with technology at the start of the course. Normally we drive that to, down to about 25% at the end. We had 0% this year. Everybody said that they were now comfortable with the technologies they had to deal with. So again, another uh, uh, achievement for the, the module. Definitely a clear appreciation and understanding of the relevance this time around, whereas before they just couldn't see the point of it. Um, so for me, I have to say, hell yes, it definitely is worth the extra workload that I have to put into it because I think it's a much more effective method of teaching. So the students look at, that's what the lab looks like, they're very, very busy. And we were fortunate enough when Corey came in, there was a lab going on. So the, the accredit, national accreditation people stuck their head in, saw students furiously working, really high quality stuff on the screen. So it was a fantastic clue. So to finish up then, student feedback. So you've heard what I think of it. So <laughs> students enjoyed the module. They made that quite clear in the, in the feedback session last week and we should get the, uh, the anonymous reports in. But we got to the stage that was such candor in the class that it was very easy to discuss things. Um, confidence with technology, a real boom. You know, that's, that was a, a defined target. It's an object, objective for the module. And to be able to say that you have 100% success with the students is fantastic. Their comment was, it's a fantastic aid for clinical. There's so many things they didn't understand that were going on in the workflow in clinical, and now they do. So the next time they go back out, they're going to be much more potent. There's no doubt about it. And they loved the prompt feedback. And as I say, they, they would answer me in 25 minutes and I would answer them straight away. Anybody who goes to the bother of responding to feedback like that deserves a quick response again. Um, significant weekly blocks of work, they said yes. They did see that. They didn't think it was too much. Um, and they thought it was absolutely fantastic when we were having the chat last week because there was no exam at the end. So they said yes, definitely, definitely worth it. Uh, they thought some of the material might be a little bit dated and they were worried about the relevance of it because of the date, datedness of it. But I was explaining to them that when we were dealing with fundamental concepts, if somebody writes a seminal paper, then there's no need for it to be updated or replaced unless something changes. So in that context, um, the stuff that they had was actually relevant today, even though it might have had a 1999 date on one of them. So I emphasized that with them just to make sure that they, they did appreciate they were getting the most up-to-date information because these skills are transferable into the workplace. And the only other thing they asked about was, everything was digital, so they asked that the lab materials be given in advance, the lab sheet, because they, would, they had the software on the screen that they were working with, they were writing a lab report on the screen, and they would like to, the opportunity to print out the paper and in advance the instruction sheet, so they're not chopping and changing windows too much, which I thought was great feedback. So, as I say, it ended up not being carrot and stick, so the perception at the start might have been carrot and stick, but they enjoyed the module, they loved it, they said thank you very much. So I think it's a success. Thank you.